Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee and it's wonderful for you to stop by here today. And our inventory today is going to be based on a video released yesterday as of the time of recording this video, probably a couple of weeks before this video actually makes it into the rotation. Uh, but that video I saw yesterday was by my virtual friend Sean from Action Retro, who made me aware for the first time of another version of Mac OS X that will run on PowerPC. Now you may remember I've done a couple of videos where I installed the uh, Mac OS 10.6 Snow Leopard Beta uh, and I still have it running that day on my uh, Aluminum PowerBook G4. Uh, now, fascinating though that is, it's not a particularly useful version because a lot of the Leopard and earlier software won't run on it. And the Snow Leopard software all requires Intel. So it's, it's, it's an interesting snapshot in time, but it's not a very practical, usable operating system. Well, now the one that Sean introduced me to yesterday, and, and the rest of us, or his many subscribers, uh, is called by the somewhat unusual name of Sorbet Leopard. And I see why the developer, who identifies himself in the Macro for Rumors forum on it by a series of numbers rather than a name, so I will link to that forum thread and you can, you can read all about it there. Uh, his, his idea here was to take the basis of Leopard, which is very solid, very steady, and bring to it some of the components and operations taken from the Snow Leopard beta. That has the potential to be very, very, very interesting indeed. Uh, so I propose today to install it on my Power Mac G5 Quad. Now, when I commented in the thread on Sean's video, uh, I said that, you know, I, I just as a way of getting started with it, I would install it on the eSATA external drive that I have there, which seemed like a great idea. Now, of course, as I've been thinking about it, can a Power Mac G5 actually boot up from an eSATA drive? I have no idea. Um, but, why do we take ourselves to the G5 and find that out? If you want to know the answer to that as much as I do, please stay tuned. Well, here we are on the Leopard desktop. Now, uh, the developer hosts his work uh, on our old friend Macintosh Garden. I'll put a link to, to that in there as well. You download the zip, uncompress the zip file, and you're left with the DMG. All right, now there are directions uh, there on Macintosh Garden. So we're going to follow those directions, opening up Disk Utility. to drag the disk image over here. Okay, now, the directions do not say to do this, but I ran afoul of this when I was uh, oh, Well, okay, maybe not. Uh, when I was trying to uh, install the Snow Leopard beta, one of the things that caused a problem was that I did not scan the image for restore. But what the heck? So, our source 
is going to be sorbet leopard. And our destination here. Okay, now I will start to restore, but before I do that, I'm going to end this screen capture uh, since it does eat up a lot of system resources. Now, yes, it's a G5 quad, it has a lot of resources to eat up, but uh, we'll be back when, uh, when this is done. Stay tuned. Okay, so it's done. Now, full disclosure, it failed miserably. When I downloaded uh, Sorbet Leopard yesterday, something wonky was going on with the internet here. And it was just unbelievably slow. It took uh, it, the zip file, this is a four gigabyte file, it took uh, well over an hour hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half to download that. Uh, when I tried to restore what I downloaded, aired out every time. So I just re-downloaded it and today whatever was going on is, is fixed. It downloaded in eight minutes and it restored. Okay, so I think we can, let's uh, We'll get that out of the list there. Close up disk utility. All right, now here is our eSATA drive now. Hmm. Well, it looks like a an installation of Mac OS to me. Uh, all right. So we're going to try one other thing here. Look in system preferences. Startup disk. Oh, by the way, the, the directions on the Mac Dust Garden page are completely correct. There is no need, in fact, you're not able to verify uh, the disk image. Uh, so just follow exactly what it says. Well, it's listed here. It, it identifies as Leopard on uh, the SATA drive. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to boot when you select it. Uh, we'll find out. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is end the screen recording, switch to camera capture, and then we will move ahead. So, Stay tuned. Okay, so here we are. Now, I'll be completely honest. I don't think this is going to work. And I would suspect we'll just end up bounced right back into, uh, into the Leopard desktop. Uh, I could be wrong. If, if that's what happens, and there's a chime, I do have a plan. Uh, of course, this is this eSATA drive is just a standard 2.5 inch uh, SSD in an enclosure. I'll just take it out of the enclosure and put it into one of the drive bays. Uh, I can temporarily remove uh, the uh, the Linux uh, SSD that's in there. Okay. Yeah, you know, I think the, the fact that we saw the the fold of the question it's booting into Phoenix. Oh, that's weird. Okay, let me see what I can come up with here. Stay tuned. Yes, as expected, uh, we've got, you, you notice the little tux icon there on the first selection. That's Phoenix, which for some reason is selected. 
and we also see leopard and we see tiger and we do not see the east side of drive. Now you can of course coax uh, open firmware into booting to a USB drive. I would suspect you could probably do the same thing with the east side of drive, but I think I'm just going to follow through on the plan as I had outlined it uh, a moment ago and uh, shut this down, take the Phoenix drive out, remove the uh, Sorbet Leopard drive from its enclosure, and then see what happens. And for some reason it isn't accepting my mouse. Okay, well, so if you want to see what happens then, stay tuned. Okay, the arrangements have been made. Holding down the option key. Make sure my Bluetooth mouse is active. Any day now. Okay. SPE said that okay. Here we are. Okay, let's wait to get a cursor. Shouldn't even take quite so darn long, but hey, such is life. Come on. Sorry about this, my friends. I suppose I could just uh, let it boot up. Oh, there we go. All right, that's looking promising. Now I am anticipating that this will boot up to the first time boot sequence. We should actually get the welcome uh, video. Pretty quick boot. I know what this is. Oh, come on. not reading my mouse. Hang on. I wonder if maybe it's just a uh, little, let's plug in a USB mouse just so we can get something happening here. Isn't a keyboard can okay? Yeah, it's it's oh, that's going to be a problem. All right, okay. In any event, 
Yeah, we have booted up here, and it seems as though it's booted up into a user interface. Uh, keeping your Power Max safe, hardening tips. Ha! Huh. It's here. All right, so I'm going to have to uh, now plug in a USB keyboard. And that's true. Whenever I would boot into Phoenix, uh, well, no, that wouldn't really be a problem. Okay. Try to plug my mouse back in now. All right, so we should be set. Okay. Ah, uh, no, we don't. Okay, uh, now I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to have to live with this a bit and see exactly what's up. Uh, uh, eventually, I need to do comparisons, but rather than you know do benchmarks now. Uh, I'm going to, um, as I say, live with this and set things up a little bit. Interesting to see those various things showing up on the desktop. Uh, so, pretty soon here you should see well, what's happening with the focus. Uh, pretty soon here, anyway, you should see uh, a video where we do have the benchmarks coming in. Uh, I've never seen it do that. Well, regardless. Yeah, you... You'll see all of the benchmarks. You'll see uh, how Sorbet Leopard compares to Leopard. Uh, so, until that comes in, be good to other people. If they need it and deserve it, be good to yourselves. Anything we do has to start from that. We can make the world a better place. It isn't yet, so please take very, very good and careful care in these difficult times. Uh, we will be back with you very soon with that comparison video and some wrap-ups and thoughts uh, as, as I go in with this uh, and then just tons of other stuff as well. So until that's available on the channel, this has been Broken Electronics.